Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of the broadcast where we give you bite-sized bits of best practices to help you be a better leader and a more effective communicator. I'm your host, Jared Bro. Each week, we ask an online question to seek your professional opinion, and earlier this week we posed this question for you. Should you write a letter to the editor for a bad story, or do you just take it? Should you write a letter to the editor if the paper writes a bad story about it, or do you just let it die? We got some very interesting observations, and I see a clear trend developing here, so let's see if you would do the same thing. Chris says it could depend on the reaction of the public or the media. If the reaction is calm, you really have to ask, does a formal response by letter to the editor make the story bigger? I see he also put hashtag La Tech alum. Thanks for being a Louisiana Tech alum. Dana says, if it's true, then you can comment to explain any missing details. But if it's true, she says, otherwise, if there are no missing details, let it die. James says, if inaccuracies occur, if it's misleading, if it's borderline deflammatory, then yes, write a letter to the editor. If you're writing because you're simply being antagonistic or negative, then no. He says, take the hit. Justine says it really depends on what details need to be clarified. She says if you need to correct something, yes, write a letter to the editor. But because you don't like it and it was true, don't write that letter. Christine says it depends, yes, if the CEO is angry or if there are factual errors. If the CEO is angry, no response. If it's inaccurate, definitely respond. And Atlata says if there are factual inaccuracies and misrepresentations, definitely write a letter to the editor uh, so facts and perspectives are recorded. All right, here's my own practice. I like to write letters to the editor, but I only do it if something is wrong on behalf of the client I'm representing. Clients, executives, take things very personally. When you're dealing with the media, you can't take it personally. It's business. If you get mad because they called you out for the truth, then change your behavior. Let me say that again, Mr. CEO, Mr. C-suite, Miss C-suite. If you don't like it because they called out the truth, change your behavior. However, the media often take things out of context, often because in the original interview, you fail to provide accurate context. So, root cause analysis, make sure in every interview, your media trainer has taught you how to deliver a preamble to answers so that perspective and context is in place. And if you do that and you're still taken out of context, or if misleading information is put in there, if they've twisted it ever so slightly, yes, a letter to the editor is appropriate. However, you only have 150 to 250 words. What can you say to call out one, two, or three things in 150 words? So when you go to write that letter, you need to know the executive team and the legal team are going to look over it. And they're going to want to write seven pages. I once had a client once that I wrote 150 words to Time Magazine on behalf of this client, and the lawyer came back with a seven-page response. And as we sat at the table debating it, I held up Time Magazine and said, let's read the letters to the editor and see who else got seven pages. The fact is, nobody got more than 200 words. So... You've got some limitations there. Don't do it because you're angry. Do it because it's the right thing. One last point. It's online and search engine optimization affects your reputation. If something's wrong, when someone finds that wrong information in the future, they also need to find online your correction, your explanation, and your letter to the editor. Because those stories live forever, your response needs to be right there with it. I hope this helps you for the broadcast. I'm Jarrett Bro.